Today we continue our study in creation and today we're contrasting uniformitarianism with uh, catastrophism or cataclysm that the uh, earth was created suddenly and that the rock stratas and fossil record that we have in the crust of the earth can be explained by the great catastrophes or sudden judgments that God has sent upon the world, in particular the flood. But uh, before we get into the, this discussion today, we want to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, when your son came into Jerusalem in his triumphal entry and the Pharisees rebuked the cries of the multitude that he was the Messiah, they said, and Jesus said, if these don't speak, the rocks would cry out. And in one way today, we are looking at the rocks crying out and giving testimony to the truth about the record of the Word of God. And we pray that in our limited knowledge and in our hasty discussion of, of these things, that we would be clear and focused and speak the truth clearly. And Father, thank you for great scientists that believe like Henry Morris and others who do understand and have studied for years the principles of science and do understand why their evidence indicates what it does. And we read their books and profit from their viewpoint and their understanding. Help us today, we pray. May the Holy Spirit guide this discussion. May it be that which helps and edifies and encourages our heart, that which would teach us and equip us and train us to say and do the right things, we pray. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen. Today we look at uniformitarianism and catastrophic judgment. Uh, not just in the theological sense, and of course there are two aspects of this terms and this argument. There is the of course, initial question of how life began, and that can be described in these two ways, that uh, yeah, scientists, of course, uh, that uh, and people who are exponents of the evolutionary viewpoint say that, that life began from, as we've discussed, non-living things, and that this happened in a one-time event where the principles of science were suspended, but that, that the evolutionary spiral and the survival of the fittest and the ordinary dealings of science with man and living things prove evolution. Of course, we don't believe that that's true, and it isn't true. And of course, the creationists say that God came on the scene suddenly and out of nothing, suddenly produced everything and that uh, that much of the fossil record and much of the strata and much of the uh, unusual situations that we find in rock strata and in unusual places that this is produced and explained by God's worldwide judgment of the flood and great canyons and great river beds and certain things that the evolutionists point to and say it took millions of years to develop the Grand Canyon. Of course, scientists can look at the sudden catastrophe of the flood, it being true, and understand how these things have happened. Uh, most of the uh, explanation biblically for the uh, Fossils and the rock strata, of course, is due to a hydriotic effect, that is the effect of water over the earth. 
but sometimes in volcanoes when this uh, and, and uh, lava flows and in the sudden eruption of volcanoes you get something similar about the changing of strata and the sweeping away of trees and the preserving of fossils and so through the study of all these things uh, we have learned that though the earth appears to be very ancient because of certain things that it, it is really very young and if one studies the, uh, the scientific principles one finds that it is very young and the, the evidence of the strata and the explanation of the fossils point to that more than to the fact that it is very, very old. And so today uh, we say that even though uh, the biblical view is catastrophe, that creation came on suddenly and that the rock strata and the things of geology are determined and caused by the flood, and this is the explanation, we, of course, recognize that once God created his creation, that he maintained it providentially and the life in it, not only physically but spiritually, by his providential care, and that would have involved the usual ordinary working of scientific principle. Now, those evolutionists that believe that it was uniform, uh, Terranism, they also recognize that there can be local catastrophes in a given situation, but they do not believe, of course, in the worldwide flood. And so they reject the, uh, the, this as an explanation for uh, each issue. But today we don't want to talk so much as looking to those original things as to just look at it from a scientific viewpoint and the study of geology. And, of course, the study of geology maintains these two same views as two uh, explanations as to why certain things are. We come first to this matter of fossil preservation. Now, of course, a fossil is an imprint of a plant or an animal uh, that is maintained in a rock, it's, it's imprinted, it's preserved in a rock strata. The bones were suddenly crushed or pressed or the leaf was suddenly compacted together and, and the very idea of fossils requires suddenness because if you have a, you see, if you have, for instance, a cow dying in a pasture somewhere and he lays there a million years, his his bones are going to be scattered around in the wind and the rain and uh, uh, they'll decay and rot and, and waste away so that where you find animals with their bone structure as they do so often intact and you find great parts of them preserved in the rock, the very idea that there are fossils require that there was something that happened suddenly before time and erosion and conditions of wear and deterioration could occur so that those bones are preserved in that state in the rock. Now this, this of course argues against the very principle that all these things took millions and millions and millions of years. Whatever caused the fossil to be imprinted in the rock had to happen suddenly. And so this of course is, is a, a great principle in understanding this kind of situation. Now, uh, the unusual rock strata must also be, uh, though uniformitarianism wants to rule out the unusual, but the unusual rock formations have to be considered with a whole too. And there are certain rocks that and, and stratas that have been formed that aren't being formed now and, and, and over the earth and can't be measured and explained in any other way than, and then some unusual event, and they must be considered in the record too. And all of the fossils and all of the rock strata, if the Bible is correct and was caused by the flood, every strata can be explained by something that happened suddenly, and some of them can only be explained in this way. Now, that is evidence against uniformitarianism because if some of them have to have a catastrophe and all of them could have been 
happened in a catastrophe, then of course that militates against the position that these happen slowly and layer by layer by layer over a thousand years just got together until over a million years it pressed together and formed this imprint of the fossil in the strata layer. And all of these things, of course, uh, argue uh, 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 for sudden judgment and catastrophe, sudden action forming these things instead of over a uh, long period of time. And of course the fossil record itself according to the uh, uh, geologist who believes in evolution, the fossil uh, record is the way you date the rock. You tell how old the rock is by the animal living in it, which fits the evolutionary imagined stage in which he lived. You see, they have this, uh, this table of ages that they have developed out of imagination when certain animals lived and occurred. And they date the rock on the basis of the fossil. And the fossils are dated on the presumption that evolution is true. So the very point in question is a means that the scientific person that, that follows the evolutionary pattern must adopt to settle the question. And this is why they come to the wrong conclusion. And they're prejudiced against it. If they have to assume that the animal in the rock was 100 million years old by their own evolutionary imagination and dating of that fossil, then they have to assume that the rock strata was formed a hundred million years old. So. And so the dating of the earth and the dating of the earth's rocks are dependent upon the bias and the prejudice in dating the fossils. And so it is, it is a very unscientific way to approach the, the, the situation that we have in, uh, in geology and of course geology is the main sign there is some uh, from the study of animals anthropology that men base evolution on but the most the most uh, the, the, the body of science that they go to most often to prove the uh, evolutionary timetable is geology and of course the very dating of these things is based on their assumption that evolution is true now there are certain things that should give them problem. For instance, uh, in in some fossils there have been as large as uh, there have been trees that have been whole and buried upside down and preserved upside down. Now this is a problem for the geologists because if the tree, of course, if the tree grew upright and then fell over after it died and laid in a, in a horizontal position uh, and it, it laid there for millions of years until something was packed up on it, how did it get completely upside down so that the branches were where the roots should be and the roots were where the branches should be in a vertical situation? Well, how do you get something like that? Well, we, we know through the action of volcanoes and the and, and that water would create an even greater upheaval of things that this would be possible that because of the currents of the water that a tree could be in the water turned completely upside down by the rush of the water and then the sediment packed around it and developed in a sudden quick way by the action of a worldwide flood. And of course this would uh, be the explanation of how a tree could be preserved upside down in a strata of rock. And there, there, are, uh, there are other problems that the geologists must face. All over the world, in certain spots, there are graveyards, some of them a hundred feet deep, a hundred feet deep piled with continual one after another dinosaur skeletons. A hundred feet deep. And these Graveyards, these uh, fossil gold mines, if you will, are found all over the world. And in one place, of course, there's almost a herd of, of, of similar creatures preserved in the rock at the same time. Now this indicates a sudden catastrophe, friend, 
because if, you know, if it's a matter of process of time, why would uh, you would have one animal dying or two maybe this year in the same spot, but how could you have a hundred all in one spot, all at the same time, preserved in the same place? And fossils have to be preserved suddenly. And so did, did they all just go to that one spot to die over hundreds of millions of years? So they all went to the same spot and providentially died in the same spot and piled up a hundred feet of fossils in the, in the, the earth? Hey, of course, that's ridiculous to think that. But, of course, again, the action of water which swept uh, bones and dirt and piled them all together just like the log jams of trees being swept down a river uh, get piled together in a certain area, the action of water, then, then that is, of course, an explanation for this. And all of this militates against the, the uh, uniform materialism principle that the evolutionists would adopt for the fossil record and for geology. Now, of course, logically and geologically, uh, and scientifically, the measurable effects of a worldwide flood could and would and, and uh, demonstrate in a local flood has demonstrated that some of these effects occur and some of these same geological formations are made and developed from the moving of great quantities of water and great quantities of earth at the same time. Yeah, and you know, I'm not a scientist nor an expert, but I do believe the Bible, and of course the Bible indicates that the flood was over the entire earth. And if you're going to take a literal approach to Scripture, you're going to have to take that literal. And of course, if there was as much water as the Bible indicates that covered everything, the highest mountains on the earth, and it took all those days for the water to subside even before the ark could rest upon the mountain. There was a huge amount of water on this earth. And not only that, friend, you have to consider that probably before the flood there was not rain. The Bible says that the earth was watered from a mist that come up from the earth. There was probably an ice canopy over the earth. And when the flood and the rains came in the destroying of this ice canopy, the Bible also says that the sources of water within the earth, the fountains of deep, were broken up. So that you not only had water coming down from the sky, you had water gushing forth from the, from the, the deposits that were in the earth. And you had great upheaval of strata and layers all at once of the rock. And, and finally, you know, I, I would in this area especially, the, the, the reading is so detailed, the explanations are, are such a scientific nature, that I would, uh, I would urge you to spend some time and get a, a book like uh, Scientific Creation by Henry Morris where he discusses uh, the principles of uniformitarianism and the principles of uh, catastrophe and cataclysm as it affects this just this scientific aspect of geology, though he, he discusses, of course, all the problems scientifically with creation. And read the amount of material and read his explanation. Get some good source books written by by qualified Christian scientists that write in this perspective. And you can, you can get the information you need to understand what I'm going to tell you is true. That really, as in everything else, the scientific uh, applying of principles only indicates that the Bible view is right. That what we have in the fossil record and what we have in the fossil pattern could not have been produced over millions of years and a long period of time. Of necessity, the scientific principles require that there were great upheavals and sudden preservation and great movements of things at one time. And as we've said, some things could have only been produced in the past in a cataclysmic way and aren't being produced now. And, and the rocks and the kind of rocks and the materials that we have. So I urge you to read the source books as I have, and, and though you may not under, understand every 
thing about the scientific argument. You can understand much of it, and you can come to the conclusion that I have that that the uh, here again the bias of the evolutionist, which because of his imaginations arbitrarily sets a date for these animals in periods that they are believed by his imagination to exist in, and then they date the rocks because they find those animals in the rocks in that period is a very faulty, illogical, unscientific way to date the earth. And along with the confusion and variance and and uh, unknowableness of carbon-14 dated, when, which we have looked at before, you see there is no scientific way that evolutionists can prove that the earth is as old as they say it is. It is all their imagination. It is done with smoke and mirrors to cover up the truth, to confuse the fact that they have no real basis scientifically to prove the things that they say. And and it is not, uh, you know, it is not the fundamentalist that is making up dreams and has a pie in the sky philosophy. It is the evolutionist that imagined that all these things are true without any evidence whatsoever to substantiate some of them. And, and in other places it's faulty or incomplete evidence done from a bias and therefore they come to wrong conclusions and even apart from the the subject of creation and the part, apart from the argument is it God or evolution, many scientists today are very skeptical of conclusions that were reached but out of and because of the influence of, of Darwin's book. And do you know that Darwin later, after he wrote the book, repudiated his own findings and said that they were false and not true? And yet they are hailed as the answer and the solution to this world's scientific questions and problems if they eliminate a creator uh, from the creation of this world. The Bible record is true, and of course the Bible record is that creation was sudden, and that God does maintain his creation now, and he did before the flood, and he did after the flood. He maintains it on basic uh, principles of science, but it's creation and the development and the upheaval of the rock strata and the preserving of fossils, all which would require some sort of sudden action and not, uh, would not really be logical or possible over a long period of time where decay and erosion and corruption and things would, would scatter the remains. It is a very, all the evidence of course is on the side of catastrophe in the Bible and very little evidence if any is on the side of the evolutionists. So I hope that at least our thoughts in this direction and I'm sure that good books upon this subject will broaden this area of argument for you and it's just another mountain in the mountain of evidence. It's just another argument it's just another demonstrable thing that indicates that evolutionist is not scientific in his approaches and real science only validates the, the Word of God and the Bible's view instead of the evolutionary view. And so I hope that the discussion of these things today has been of profit and use in your thinking about the age of the earth and how it is dated and how it is measured. Amen.